Have you stayed away from Webtree because the jargon is overwhelming? If this is the case, subscribe to the channel and like this video as you are about to learn about the MetaMask API in under 3 minutes. We will try to learn this by using standard web development terms that you are familiar with. But first, let's put things into context. Web applications, for the most part, all have these building blocks. A way to sign in users and identify them, a place to store data, and lastly, a place to store files. You are probably used to relying on third-party providers like AWS or Firebase for all those needs, and you are right to do so as managing all of these on your own is a job for multiple teams, and you as a lonely solo developer won't be able to do all of this. Let's try to see if we can use the MetaMask API to solve at least two of those issues. Everything we will be talking about today is accessible via the Ethereum object. This object is injected into the global scope of web pages when you have the extension installed in your browser. If your goal is to log in users, you can simply request to view their accounts by submitting a eat request accounts call to the API. This will then pop open a login dialog almost the same way as a social login like Google or Facebook would work. The tricky part is that users are in full control. They can decide to log out of the application and you must be the one who listens to changes. You can listen to those changes via event listeners. To make sure that your application state doesn't fall out of sync, you might want to store the user's information into local storage and to update it when users change their wallet or disconnect. This should provide for a pretty nice login solutions to the 30 million MetaMask users. Let's now see if we can use MetaMask to store information like we would in a database. This is going to be tricky as MetaMask is made to interact with the blockchain. A blockchain is just a giant network of computers who talk to each other and store information publicly. You cannot, however, interact with the blockchain in the same way you would interact with an SQL database. You will have to think twice about saving anything to the blockchain, as writing data will cost the user every time. But if you do decide to save something to the blockchain, the MetaMask API is able to submit writes and also to read data from the blockchain. But instead of using directly the API, you will be relying on libraries like Web3.js or Ethers.js as they provide helper functions to simplify your life and will avoid you learning all of these complicated API methods. To recap, we are already near the 3 minute mark and we have not even yet started writing code to read or write data from the blockchain. The MetaMask API is the tip of the iceberg of Web3 development, so if you want to learn more, please like and comment on this video to indicate that you would like more Web3 content.